happening from wherever you are in the world. This is Clayton and Anthony coming live. That was the, I don't, my, 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 my job is now done. I can, that wasn't too bad. I eh? can, it, was, it was all right. It's I, I taken me two years to say that. Yeah, although I do believe that I do it with much more uh, enthusiasm and energy. Look, that's eight people on already. If once you're jumping on, uh, jump into the chat box. Say hi so that we know that you can hear us. Yeah, uh, we're, just, we're, from? we're just assuming that, that you can. But uh, yeah, so, so it's been a while since we've been on. Clay was away in the Ments on a boat trip for a couple of weeks and he came back. Enthusiastic and stoked. Enthusiastic and sunburnt. And then I was, Ozzy's mum. Oh, this is Ozzy on mum's laptop. Hey, oh, Ozzy, you might, you might make a little guest appearance today. Yeah. In, uh, we, so we got some of the footage from the wave pool. So yeah, Clay was away for a couple of weeks in the Ments. Then he came back while he was um, getting ready to then do a trip down to the wave pool. I was over in New Zealand, so we couldn't jump on live. But uh, you did the wave pool last week. Now we're back. We are, we're around this week. Then next week, we're back down the wave pool for another, another coaching session down there. So, uh, bonjour, watching from Switzerland. It'll be late there. So yeah, so we so a surprise Q and A. <laughs> yeah, a surprise Q and A. Exactly, Graham. Graham doesn't miss a beat. Hey, eh? he's just like ksh, on yeah. every single session. And uh, Graham. so you got some footage from the wave pool. One of the things which you noted. So one of the big problems that you saw down at the wave pool. So you were there for three days. Yeah. Did a whole bunch of different levels of surfers down there. Big thing was a lot of people were trying too hard. Yeah, almost like too many moving parts. Um, and what I said to the guys is just do less, 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 less. Mm. So it, it was it was quite weird in that I asked everyone to paddle less when they catch the wave, do less when you're on your board, but everyone improved in their surfing. So mm. it's kind of like like we did the opposite and got the result that we wanted. Yeah, so, so we're going to see some footage. I haven't seen much of the footage. I couldn't make it down to the wave pool. I was, um, I was over in New Zealand uh, during that week, and then I was up in Cairns all, all over the place. I just wasn't invited. I was all over the place. Left out. How, how about that? It's all right. I'm done, I'm done the next week. I'm just moving out of the way. I just realised that the laptop is in front. So do you want to show some footage? And then we'll sort of break it down. If anybody's got any questions, and chuck them through in the, yeah. in, in the chat. Right, so but let just, me... Just in some context, yeah. uh, you can open up the iPad, it's fine. Um, when we did two sessions, the first session was literally just us seeing what we're dealing with, mm. um, and then thereafter went to do the coaching. So I kind of want to just um, bring to your attention the, the issues that I was seeing in the water, and then kind of what we did to fix them. Yeah, because these, these issues are they sort of play across beginner, intermediate, everyone sort of seems to have, these are, these are popping up time and time again. Yeah. So there's a good chance that, that anybody watching now is probably going to suffer from do, something Do you know what's here. going to sound really weird? I'm going to go full screen again I, I would say that, that half of these guys don't know how to stand. Mm. It's going to sound really, really weird. But basically, and we'll go and show you that, if you want to stand on a surfboard effortlessly, you want to use your bones for balance. So if you stack all your bones, you, you feel lighter because you don't use your muscles. However, if you, if you bend your bones at like say 90 degree angles, you have to use your muscle to support the standing. Mm. But then you can't use the muscle for movement. Yeah. So um, that, that's one of the, the things. And then when people move, they just got too many random <laughs> moving parts. Like, yeah. like they don't know what they're doing wrong. Yeah. So anyway, let's, let's jump in and, and check it out. Let's bring up the iPad. Okay, so do you know what, what wave setting this is? Because I know somebody's going to ask what, um, what wave setting this is. The first session, it was just intermediates. So it's an intermediate intermediate yeah. wave setting from Urban Surf. So this is an intermediate down at Urban Surf. All right, so um, where are we? Yeah, we're, just, we're right at the end. So yeah, right, okay. this is the start of the set. Oh, so this is Aussie. By Aussie, the way. straight out. Aussie, you're straight out, straight out of the gate there. Okay, so what, what I want to show you is that when Ozzy stands up, okay, his, his back is straight. Yeah. Which means that um, his, his bones are stacked and he feels a lot more comfortable. All right. Also, if, if you're back straight, you, your eyes tend to find level really easy. Mm. But check this out. Go full screen here. Imagine if I'm standing kind of like this with my back bent. It's really hard to find level and it's like my whole world's just... Your gyro, you, you, your gyro's gone, gone all a pot. Correct. All right, so Aussie, lovely bottom turn. 
So, so this is a this is a, a a good example. Yeah, because on the bottom turn, there's no tension there. Look how quickly he gets to the bottom and pivots, and you can see he's standing up straight. Yeah. Okay, that's so a really good posture. He's surfing in the pocket of the wave. So over here, we call this a strike distance. Ozzy is pretty much hitting everything that he needs to hit inside of the pocket. A lot of guys surf their strike distances out there. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And the, the problem with that is that they're always looking to the future, trying to hit the future. Yeah. Which never pans out well. All right. Nice crack off the top. Now, have a look at the person at the back. Look at that stance. What's wrong with that hand? It's kind of chest down to the knees. Yeah. It's almost like the hands are going down as if like, like I'm going to try and push myself off of the water to hold myself up. Correct. All right. So if you were to dive into a swimming pool, would that, you'd, you'd put your hands out in front, bend over and... Right, so that's almost the posture. Yeah. Okay, so I, I'm, I'm thinking that this person's worried about the takeoff and worried about nose diving. But the body language almost supports nose diving and diving into the water. Does that make yeah. sense? Okay, so they're not thinking about where they're going, what they're wanting to do. Probably now, they, they, they made it though, they didn't stuck it. Okay, so he made it, back is bent, lots of tension. Mm. So that he's not using his bones for weight, so he's not light on his feet. Um, he's actually quite heavy on his feet. And then, if you've ever held the... So imagine I'm walking around with a cup of water. Look, my back is straight. It's really hard to hold the cup like this and walk around like that. <laughs> All right, so now the other thing, people don't randomly walk around and just drop coffee. Okay, so what happens is you're not supporting your hips. It's almost like the hips are doing all the bending rather than the knees doing all the bending. Yeah. So I'm going to zoom into this little guy here. Oopsie, let's clear that. And zoom into this. Okay, watch what happens. So the person's going along, bang, drops coffee. Yeah. Okay, so you. it makes the chest bend to the knee, which locks all the muscles and makes him stiff and tense. Yeah. All right? And then carries on. So he's standing up. Now, if you look at the arms, the, the arms are... Okay, so, so this surfer, his intention was to go up. Yeah. All right, so let's say he wants to do a jump. However, his arms go left and right. So do you think that the potential to jump up was matched with how his body moved? I know. No, so, so he's not quite hitting the target, he's not hitting the mark. So he's got too many moving parts on the arms. Now watch this. What happens there? Bends the back. Yeah, the, the chest goes towards the knees. Okay, watch that. Starts to drop the coffee, catches the rail, falls over backwards. Bang. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we've got another one here. Let's watch this. Takes off on the wave. No, it's... it's the <laughs> If, if you're wondering, that is the 360 camera on, 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 on his back. Yeah, so that's just from we, we did film a whole bunch of point of view stuff. So here's another surfer whose back is really touching the knees. Yeah. So it, it makes what kind of, um, see how he catches rail and watch the arms go a bit wobbly and all over the place. Okay, now had they have just stood with a straight back, they would have nailed the takeoff. So that bent back with the arms down is leading to them being stiff. And when they take off and hit the bottom of the wave, the arms are going all over the place and they're losing control. The weird thing is that it's almost counterintuitive. Your body sort of naturally wants to, I suppose, make itself smaller and to try to protect itself. But the reality is, is we need to do this, which, okay, so, which seems like the opposite so thing. Everyone wants to do these three things. Catch a wave, do a pop-up, stand on the board and, and balance and surf. Yeah. Okay, so if I to ask you a question, how do you find balance? What do you do? Stand up straight. Yeah, so another way of posing the question, if I asked everyone online to do a handstand, how would they handstand? And they would try straighten up their body. Yeah, and so, 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 so the reason why I'm saying that, that, that whole idea of standing up straight is all we need to do. However, when you feel like you're going to fall over, it's this whole thing of hands go out because you, you're you constantly trying to protect yourself. So hands go out or your hands go behind. And so that, that idea of standing up straight is the one thing that we, that we need to do. 
Okay, but so for some reason, it never happens. <laughs> correct, because we're worried about our fear. Yeah. So, check, all right, check this out. So imagine that we're standing up straight, right? And we're in a bus, and the bus wants to start to accelerate, all right? All we have to do is move our hips about half a centimeter in the direction we want to go. So watch, watch on the screen there. It's literally just that. Yeah. That's acceleration. Now, let's say the bus is stopping. I, I could almost just do this, and I won't fall over. Yeah. So see how subtle those movements are? Yeah, really subtle. So in surfing, you just need to do subtle maneuvers with your, with your hips, and you'll have control. Now, what would up and down be? I bend my knees. None of my back doesn't move much. Okay, so that's compression extension. However, we got guys doing this. Yeah, right. And then the arm's going nuts on compression extension. Yeah. And then we got guys standing on the back foot, so those subtle hip movements aren't there. So when the board accelerates, they're winding down car windows. Mm. So pretty much if most of these surfers did less and used their bones for balance and kept their, their body straight, but then wherever they wanted to go, they just subtly moved onto the front foot or the back foot. Um, but a subtle movement as opposed to the big movements that, that most of us are, end up doing just because it feels like that's what we need to do. So he, here's the kicker. If you've got good technique, you don't need a lot of it. And that's why the best surfers in the world make surfing look effortless. Mm. Well, they surf effortlessly. Yeah. Like, wow, he's not even trying. He's like nonchalant. It's this, it's that. And that's what it is. It's, it's, you, you've figured out how to do it, so you don't need a lot of it. But those surfers that move poorly you got to make up with a lot of effort to try to get that thing working. Mm. Um, and you see guys moving poorly, the backs are bent, so they, they're finding it hard to move. Um, there's no compression because they're bending their backs and not the knees, so they find it really hard to get up the wave. And um, generally, the people that move poorly will want more volume in the board to make it unresponsive to bad habits. Yeah, you've said this before, that, that a higher volume almost masks some of your bad habits. It, it, yeah, it, it makes up for it. It numbs them down. So imagine, okay, all these guys who are back bending and their hands are going all over. The boards are going to respond, to, a high performance board will respond and they just fall. Yeah. So if they go slightly wider and thicker in the rails, um, that it doesn't react to their bad takeoffs. But then it's also not going to react on the turns. So they're going to try extra hard to then hack that high volume board around mm. and then they start almost um, picking up some bad habits where they're doing everything at a hundred percent and if they get it wrong they don't know how to fix it but the good surfers are doing stuff at um, a lower percentage they, they may be surfing at 60 percent where they've got 40 in the tank to give more and they can still give less mm. so that they're being very attentive to how much energy they're using on the waves. Yeah. 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 Anyway. Excellent. Yeah. Um, so we haven't got any questions coming in yet. If you, if you have got a question, chuck it in. We have got one question. Why is Slater's wave pool so expensive? Um, do you want to answer? I'm happy to. Well, I think there's, there's two reasons. One is there, are, there aren't so many waves per, per minute, so to speak. Yep. So, so like, I've just come back from Urban Surf. There were 18 waves, so 18, 18 sets in an hour. I think it's like about 13 or 14 waves, isn't 12 it? 12 waves oh. in a set. So if you, and there's two sides. Yeah. Okay, so double that. Um, so if you think about how many waves per session the guys are getting, where I think at Slaters you're only getting about five? Yeah, it's, mistaken. it's not many. It's not many. Yeah. It's, but it's, um, so you're getting less waves per minute, so, so naturally the wave, price of the wave is going to go up. And also, there's the, there's the cost of the prestige of it being a Kelly Slater's wave pool. It's a bit like, why, why does a Gucci handbag cost <laughs> so much more than I've managed to get handbags into surfing? Uh, but how do, why does a Gucci handbag cost so much more than just a, a handbag that you might just get from, like, your, the, I don't know, yeah. one of your normal superstores like Kmart or whatever? Yeah. But it's, it's, it's that. But also, I mean... I remember seeing a, a speaker once talking, and there, so Tiffany's used to sell a paperclip. Okay, it was gold-plated, but one paperclip, and it was like $2,600 for one paperclip. And that was because of the prestige of having a paperclip from, from Tiffany's. But uh, not that I'd ever pay 
two thousand six hundred dollars for a paper clip. Yeah. But it, but it is it is partly that as well. You're you're paying to be in Kelly Slater's uh, wave pool. So there is there is that side of it. There is an, I think there's another wave pool opening up in South America, isn't there? Where you've got to be on the resort. You have to be on the resort or own a property on the resort to use the wave pool. And I think it's going to be quite expensive yeah. to, to use that on there as well. And again, it's a, it's a prestige kind of thing. Excellent. Um, John hi, said, hi. hi from a freezing Melbourne. So John, hi from a really warm Gold Coast. <laughs> it's, it's lovely outside. It is pretty nice today, yeah. although we will be down uh, in Melbourne next next week. So um, look, no questions have come in yet. Did you want to did you want to jump back into some of this and just point out a few more things? Yeah. Okay. Uh, so first of all, on the takeoff, just stack your bones. Yeah. Right. So let's let's roll it through. Okay. So. Um, I'm, I can't wait to see the bit of footage here. So he's he's got in. He's tucked into so, a tiny so little head dip. Look at but this. The, but the camera's up on on the outside of the barrel. See this tube riding stance over here. What, what's wrong with that end? Well, it's bending at the hips rather yeah, so than rather I said than it's crouching really getting down. Getting a distorted yeah. skew of what it looks like. Yeah. Right, so that's that's number one. Now, do you think that you would be able to fit into that wave that way? So the lips either going to hit you in the head, or it's going to hit you in the bum, and it's it's kind of you almost made yourself unstable. Yeah. Okay, and then the other thing is you're almost going to kind of wobble through that barrel, whereas if you just bend your knees and keep your back straight, you're going to have a, a lot more um, yeah. control over that. So. Yeah, interesting to have a look at that. Um. Oh, okay. Hang on. We we can use this for a question that's just come up from Matthew yeah. Matthew Allen here. So we can use that little bit of footage to talk about this. Are boards that feel stiffer uh, feel stiff easier to hold rail through a long cutback? So we've got a cutback going on here. Maybe we can talk um, about what we're seeing. Allen. Matthew Allen. Matthew Allen. Sorry. Okay. So what the question? What would make a board feel stiff? So if the rail was too thick and you could not submerge that rail into the water, mm. it would make you take a, a, a longer time to try and get it in. That would make a board feel stiff. Okay. Okay. Yep. Another thing: if the board was really wide, you'd have to displace more water under the board to get the board to turn. That would make a board feel stiff. If your board had flat rocker and you try to turn it, the rocker would push into the water, okay, and it, would, would, it wouldn't want to turn. It would either want to keep going straight, or if you did try to turn it, it would slow you down and stop you. Mm. So that would make a board feel stiff. Okay. Okay, so, and then also if the board's really long, it would have a slower turning circle, and again, that would make a board feel stiff. Okay. If, you, if your fins were too big, that could make a board feel stiff. If your fins were set parallel rather than towed in, that would make a board feel stiff. Yeah. Okay, so there's, there's a lot of things um, that so, could potentially make a board feel stiff. So, so, in answer, so, so let's just say that, you, that you've got a board that feels stiff. So I think the question is, is, does it make it easier to hold it through a long cutback? So rather than having a twitchy, fast, responsive board, one that feels stiff, is that easier to hold, hold rail through a okay, long cut back? So if, okay, so let's just, let's go to this wave over here. All right, so um, if we have a look at this, this line over here that, that's been taken, um, our surfer is, if this is a strike range over here, okay, he's already probably three meters away from the foam. Mm -hmm. so, as the wave flattens out, if you have a flat rocker, it will sustain you through the cutback. But let's just say if the surfer wanted to do the cutback a lot more tighter, that flatter rocker would not allow for that. Mm. Okay, so if you're learning how to do cutbacks, a flatter rocker would almost help you maintain speed if you've tracked too far out on the shoulder. Okay, yeah. Okay, if you have a thin rail, you might catch rail when you're out there. So a fuller rail would help you maintain the cutback at a slower speed. Yep. And it would help bring you back. What, what I've found, if I've, if I've been riding a board that I feel is a bit stiffer than, than some of the other ones that I ride, it's that, that holding, there, there comes a point in the, in the cutback, and I'm one of those people that kind of probably goes out a bit too far for my cutbacks. 
But when I do do the cutback, there is that bit where it, it, is easy, it is easier to hold as you're coming back, but the, but the transitions then become really difficult when the board's stiff. Yeah. So, so, so you end up coming back to the foam, but then you can't redirect it to then so come back the other way. So think about this. A stiff board wants to kind of stay flat mm. because the rail's too full, so it won't go under. It's too wide, so it doesn't want to go rail to rail, whatever other reason there might be for it. So when you finally get it to turn, you hold that, and then as you finish the turning, it's going to want to stay flat, and then it's going to want to take longer to go to the opposite rail, mm. which means that it's going to be harder for you to hit those sweet spots of the wave. Um, but if you're not surfing well, in, when I say that, if you don't move your body well, um, you want those longer transitions to kind of get control of your thoughts and your movements. Yeah. Um, and then to potentially um, surf the board and the wave better. Yeah, so so let me just go to that screen there. So on a long board then, for, for example, so when, when we've taken the, the, the logs out, oh, your log's not, oh, it is yeah. the log. So, so when we've taken the logs out, on those, obviously that's a huge, you've got six, six foot, six, uh, sorry, six foot, uh, nine foot six of, of board that you're turning around. But what I've found then is when you come back and you hit the phone, it is, you've really got to readjust yourself to get back on the tail to almost pivot it, yeah. otherwise it's... So there, there's, there's many sweet spots on that board. Mm. Like if you want to plane, you kind of want to stand middle or to the top front. Um, if you want it to pivot, you kind of got to be right at the back. If you wanted to just roll on a gentle bottom turn, you almost got to step across the string or onto yeah. the rail more just to get it a roll. So you have to be in a stance where you're comfortable to move on a long board. So if yeah. you've got a super wide short board stance on a long board, they're really stiff and really hard mm. to move. But if you've got a narrow stance where you can, you can do easy crossovers, yeah. um, you can shift your weight really easy. So a short border stance on a long board is different to a long border stance on a short board. It's, yeah. yeah, it's fun. It's fun getting to discover all these different, uh, different, different vehicles. It's, um, but hopefully that answered your question. We kind of went off on a bit of a tangent there talking about long boards. You pointed at something then. I, I, I want to go back up to this question here. So yeah. Pete is asking, uh, I have found that when you twist to a front-on stance, you don't bend at the hips so much. When standing side-on, you tend to use the hips um, yes. rather than knees. Yeah. Okay, so that, that's a really, really good answer. Um, the, the reason being, your knees aren't designed to bend sideways because it's a hinge joint. Yeah. So it, it's kind of like a hinge where it just moves. It, it can't, they don't bend sideways. Mm. So when you face front on, your knees hinge more, more efficiently forwards. But when you side on, because your, hin your knees don't like to hinge, what happens is the, head, the, the, the hips hinge. Yeah. And then, you, yeah, you start surfing wrong. So most of these people who are struggling to um, keep their back straight are in a side on poo stance and they're using their hips rather than the knees. Yeah, yeah, excellent. Louise saying, is saying hi from a flat Sunshine Coast, also a very flat Gold Coast. Hi from hey, Taranaki, west coast of New Zealand. Crazy. Hopefully it's a bit, a bit warmer over there than it was last week when I was there. Uh, we've already done that one there. We've done that one there, we've done that yep. one there. Okay, we've done that one there. Right, let's go to, speaking of urban surf, a bit of a broad question. Is oh. there an ideal board, board, a broad question about a board? Is there an ideal board to use at the wave pool in your eyes, specifically cruiser setting? Now, this is interesting because you, yeah. you wanted to, the next time we go down, was to take your really small wave board and test it out in just the, that cruiser settings. I almost wanted like a weaker one. I'm going uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to grab the, the board. Do you want me to grab your one or that one? Uh, my one, it's fine. All right. So you wanted to go down and test this out in the cruiser setting. I'm just trying to grab it, everybody, without damaging it. Okay, brand new board. It, it's coming in. Hang on. Need a hand there. It's all right. It got stuck in the rack, and I'm stuck behind lights and all sorts. You'll hear me come back into the camera in just a second. Nico, run over to help me. Technical difficulty. It's all right. Be back shortly. I'm back. Okay, stand I'm up. Back. So that thing. Look how tiny it is. So this is Clay's, not mine. But I would. Uh, I get. It's just come to that bit. Like the whatever it's called in your in your your, your collarbone. The, what's it? So hold the tail up so they can see the, the width okay, of the so tail. Okay, so it's got a super wide tail. Look at that thing. 
Okay, but hold it up that way so you can see how thin the tail is. That it's, it's paper thin over here. And let me take it that way there so you can see it sort of that. Just dip your head just like that way there so we can get, here we go. So we get, try and give you a bit of a view of the whole thing. I'll do like one of the 3D things that you can do when you go onto a surfboard website so where you can rotate it around. That is my tiny wave board. The bottom is a? Um, it's got tons of V in it. I don't know if you can see it, it's really hard oh, to see because of the white. Uh, just go more of an angle. There's a quad setup. I don't yeah. know if you can see the V there. Can you see it looks like it's got a spine through it? That it's got tons of V in it. All right. So that is that board. I'm going to place it just down here on the table for a second. So, so, and quite wide as well. It's the widest board I own. It's actually quite wide. Yeah. So I won't put it like that. Oh, I'll end up rack, so I'll just put it there for a minute so I can get back in. So going back to the question is, do you feel that there is an ideal for, for use of the, because so that's one that, that you want to go there and try at cruiser. I want to ride that in the weakest wave in the pool setting. And tell, tell us why that is. Why would, why would that board, now that you've seen it, why, why would that board be useful on such a weak setting? Because it'll feel like I'm skateboarding out there. Okay, you're still not, but, but why? What's, what is it about that board? So if you're going to a wave pool and you're going to surf a really weak setting, stereotypically, most people on a cruiser setting would probably grab a really big long board or a soft top. You're then going to take out the shortest board in your arsenal, and I did say arsenal. Most people would go, why would you take out such a short board? How's that going to work? Um, okay, so... You've got to understand something about the wave pool. The bigger the waves are, the messier they are. It's not the ocean, it's a pool. So all that water breaking towards the shoreline has to turn and go back out to sea or, or back out to the pool. Yeah. So the more waves that come, the more wobbly and, and messed up the waves get. So the first wave is always the cleanest, but it's slightly fatter and not so great. Yep. Second, third, fourth waves are really that they're good. But then after that, the waves start getting a little bit messier. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the the lower the setting, okay, in other words, the less water that's going towards the beach, um, the more perfect the waves are. Okay, yeah. Okay, so if I can ride a smaller setting, the waves more perfect, but it's weaker. Is this the reason why so many people really rate cruiser turns then? So, so at Urban be. Surf, we've got Cruiser, which I've, I've ridden Cruiser. I didn't like it. I thought it was way, way, way too weak. Yes, okay. Why? Really so, weak. So if it's weak, you're not getting enough speed, hence the, the flatter rocker and the wider board. Um, that thing's going to fit into the wave where you can start doing turns. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm super excited to, to go skateboarding <laughs> on that thing in the wave pool on some weak perfect waves okay so a, a little bit that i was alluding to that i was trying to get i was trying to i didn't go there i was sorry, trying to edge clay it. into it so the reason why that board there is really good you've got the width on the board for that for that for that, that, for that gliding in you're, you're paddling in yep extra width from that so for a little bit for the extra volume as well but more so that wide tail is what the is giving you of lift and is, push yeah is, that's what's giving you the lift and the push on that small wave yeah so going back to to john's question if you were to to surf one of the weaker waves at a wave pool and you were to take in a shorter board you would want to be going for that i know that a lot of the time we're talking about don't go for the for the wide small flat rocker but you almost do in this case or are you gonna um the wide tail is a bit, I suppose I'm trying to get out here. But urban surf's a bit weird because there is quite a bit of push on the wave. Like there's a surge of water and you get quite a bit of speed. But it's not a wave where there's a lip throwing that you can bank off all the time. Mm. You normally get up there and it feels like the wave doesn't quite push. Okay, yeah. Push you back down. So you have to actually turn and twist and go back down. Now, the faster your board is, the more you go to the shoulder and the less the wave helps you. Okay. So kind of like more of a performancey board does allow you to surf the pocket more, which makes the wave easier to surf and easier to do turns. So if you have got a, a, a f the, the standard flat, wide, high volume board, 
you're going to get pushed out to the shoulder. And okay. Yes, you'll get length of ride. You'll probably go from the start to the finish. But when it comes to doing turns, you're going to find it quite difficult. Okay. So, John, hopefully that kind of give you... I don't, think, I don't know if it's answered your question directly, because I don't think that there is a perfect board, because it also depends upon how you like to set. Well, perfect for what? Perfect for, for length of ride. Perfect so that you don't get injured. Okay, let's say... Injured. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to take control here. Let's say that you, that you go into Urban Surf, you're going to surf the cruiser setting, but you want to do some turns on it. Okay. So you don't want to just stand up and just go to the end. You want to stand up and maybe try and do one or two turns. You're working on your turns. Okay. So, it, it, well, it then depends, like, are you a beginner, an intermediate surfer, or an advanced surfer? Intermediate. Okay. I'm, I'm an intermediate going to surf cruiser. So, so let's say that you took a mid-length down. Would you want a swallowtail or a round tail? I'd want a round tail because the swallowtail is going to push me further down the line. Okay, so you just said fast. that you want a slower board to do turns. Because the wave's slow, so I wouldn't want a fast board. Okay, but most people going there will want a fast board so that they can make the section or make the wave. So they're um. choosing the wrong board or the wrong the, the, the thought process. If you go in there to do turn, get a board that turns. It's going to be slower. If you want to get a, a real fast board, you're going to go real fast, but then you're not going to get your turns done. Okay, yeah. So, so if I was to go for length of ride, then yeah, okay, a swallow tail might might be might might be good for that, or the sort of wider tail might be good for that. Okay, makes sense. Does make sense. Hopefully, that makes sense for you as well, John. Okay, uh, let's have a look here. Interesting or long stance? Interesting long stance on short boards and narrow stance on long boards. Yep, is a bit interesting. <laughs> Yeah, so think about walking. If, if you took a really wide step, then another really wide step, it's really hard to kind of walk. But if you took small steps, you can maintain your balance better. Mm. Um, whereas on a short board, you don't move. So if you have a wider stance, you can kind of push those tails and manipulate them. Um, yep. Uh, how you guys doing? How was it? Is Owen Seth? Lots of fun. We're always having lots of fun, though. It's get, epic. Get, getting ready for tomorrow's surf. Um, okay, let me see. Got a couple of questions coming in here. If what you're saying, reference stance, then asymmetrical board shapes start really, really making sense. Anyone see Mick Fanning just came out with one, I think. I don't know if yeah, he's... So, has he? So... I saw him surfing one, but I don't know if, it's, if it was one of his shapes. Asymmetrical boards make sense if you, say, live in J Bay and you only go right. Mm. Or if you somewhere in like Indonesia where you're only going left. My finless is asymmetrical, so I only ever go right on that thing. Well, you live on the Gold Coast yeah. and all the point breaks are right hand point breaks. Yeah. And that's kind of where you want to ride them because you get long long waves and it's it's super fun. Yeah. Um, but it does mean that if you wanted to ride it asymmetrical and you changed spots, like if you on a right hand point break and you went to Indo, you might have hit another board. Mm. Yeah. Uh, there's, a, there's a lot of questions, uh, there's a lot of comments coming in. I'm not going to bring them all on the screen, but I do appreciate yeah. everyone putting it in. I said, Jude asked, how wide is that small wave board of mine? So you, you've got to understand how wide is my regular board. So my regular board is 18 and three quarters. Right. Okay. That board's 20. Okay. So it's, it's a whole inch and a quarter wider than all my other boards. I think it looks, because it's because of how short it is, it looks even wider than that. Yeah, yeah, no, it does. Hey, Joey, I kind of, um, she's when I first started surfing, he surfed with Joey all the time. He's moved to the States, so. Hi from the States. Okay. Okay, well, we've got here. I've, I've surfed all sessions except the advanced. the advanced. I like the cruiser setting the best. It's weaker, but so much fun. Yeah, so um, if you can have a board that then makes up for the weakness, that gives you a bit more drive, um, or gives you that a little bit more speed, um, that way it could be so fun. Yeah. Jude's saying you have to be really smarter about speed generation and management with those sort of flat, flat waves. Yeah. It takes more of a conscious effort. To, which, is, which is one of the reasons why you think it's really good to surf the smaller wave settings down at the wave pool. Everyone goes down there and they... They want to go bigger, bigger, bigger. Yeah, I, 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 I appreciate it. You, you, you're going down there, you're paying however much it costs 
to, to surf down there. So you want to go, oh yeah, I want to get the best setting possible. However, you can often improve so much better. Cruiser, cruiser turns, okay, I love so, cruiser turns. So let's take that out of the way pull setting and let's take it to the, the bowl setting on our skate, our skate bowl. Yeah. All right. If I made someone go to the, the, the big roll in, yeah. All right. What happens? You start creating. They're freaking out. Yeah, you freak out. And what happens when you freak out? You generally freeze. You tense up. And you tense up. Make mistakes. Correct. So if you go to the small settings and you figure out how to roll and how to turn and all that kind of stuff, you've, you're armed with all this knowledge on how to then tackle the bigger setting. Mm. But a lot of people just go to the bigger setting thinking that it would make them a better surfer, but it doesn't. Yeah. Figure it out on the smaller stuff. Then take what you learned to the bigger stuff. Yeah, cool. Uh, what have we got here? Okay, any recommendations? Here we go. This is a question. Starting to look like summer here in Perth, i.e. super small, super straight and dumpy. Any <laughs> recommendations to improve or at least maintain skills in those conditions? So you've, you've, I've got one of those, that board that Clay's got there, I've got, I've got one that's being, it has, hasn't been glassed yet, but it's over there. Which so is we make that for spring here in Australia. Yeah. Because we normally get onshore winds, it's normally about this big, and we, we're lucky just to get in the water. Yeah. And we're normally surfing like shore breaks and stuff. Mm. Um, so it'd be very similar to, I, I, I would think to so. that. So what are your recommendations to improve in those conditions? Or, or, or at least maintain well, skills. What are the things that you're trying to achieve? Like if it's tiny, I'm having fun on that. Yeah. But I've also got a mid-length, a long board, a uh, finless, um, a twin fin. So I have got various tools to make me surf when the waves are crap. Mm. Because I don't want to have to go to gym. Like I, I don't want to have to do the other kinds of training because I, I'm not really that type of person. I would much rather surf and if I can't surf, and it has been a while, then I'll, oh, I'll drag myself off to gym reluctantly. Yeah. Yeah. So one thing that, that, that you've always got me to do, even when the, the conditions are crappy, is to, is to either focus on doing one thing, or if it's closeouts, okay, make use of that closeout section. Just go out there yeah. and just go for it. Or I'm like, and those are gifts. They close out. It's an air section. It's a 360 yeah. section. It's, a, it's like there's, there's low stakes. Zero, zero 360s have happened. <laughs> But then, but then even taking off and going the wrong way on a wave, I mean, you could call that, I've, you've, you've got me to pull in, you've got me to take off and go the wrong way into the yeah. barrel. Yeah. So, I and mean, see you see how long you can go before you fall. Yeah. Yeah. So they're, they're throwaways. So um, if you just look at it like um, throwaway ways where you get to try things again and again and again, it will keep you fine tuned and you'll see stuff. Okay. Uh, question. Did you know the answer to this one here? Does slack line affect negatively to surf stance? No, slack line, you pretty much insert stance because you're facing front on. Yeah. If you try slack line side on, it's really difficult. Yeah. Um, let's give a look. What else we got here? We've got some people sharing some of their experiences with boards there. Enrico, takeoff photography, has shared some stuff about the boards that he's riding. Uh, da -da -da -da. It's underneath is nice. So with Enrico, um, you said that you, you're a big dude. Um, you're riding a six hour, not getting good turns, you're digging the rail. So there's a very good chance you, you're overcooking it and you're pushing too hard. Okay, so remember in the beginning, I said if you've got good technique, you don't need a lot of power and energy. Um, so there's a very good chance that you're overturning. Um, and that's why when you ride a, a, a higher volume board, um, I think that may be cancelling out some of your effort. Yeah, I'm just going to look here. So, so putting a twin fin, and it continues, and now I'm flying. I think it's maybe 40 litres. Yep. And then it continues on, and I'm enjoying the turns and cutbacks. Shall I stick to this or try to go back to the performance shape? Okay, so if you go back to the performance shape, I encourage you to try to surf it at 60%. So um, if you go into it too hard and too fast, you may overcook it, which I think is what you might be doing at the moment. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. I am. Um, I mean, Enrico Takeoff Photography is pretty much the same, same as me in terms of the, the boards that you're riding as well. Very similar. You put me on your 6620 for a while, and that was, um, that was uh, a twin pin. 
And that was, that was and that was super fun on that. But then you said to me, "And get off of it because you're getting damn lazy." And then you made me get back on my high performance board again. Well, because the rock is flat, and you got excited, you, you kept surfing onto the shoulder and doing cutbacks. Yeah. And I was like, "Ant, you actually got to start using the wave better and going more top to bottom." Yeah. So I was like, "Jump off that, try go top to bottom." Yeah. Perfect. Anyway, guys, we are going to. I mean, one more comments come in. Okay, yeah, that wasn't a question. Perfect. Thanks everyone that's, that's tuned in. We're going to jump off. Keep your eyes uh, peeled because we will be jumping back on again. Now that we're back here in the office, we'll be jumping on doing some of these lives. If any of you are within the Insiders community, inside the app, then I've just updated the times that we're going to be doing the, the live coaching sessions. So get your footage uploaded into there. Uh, I think the first one is in, is in two weeks. I've just updated it though. So go and, go and check that out. Uh, and I've also just released this month's monthly challenge. I did that last night and the replay from the last session is up. So if you've got access to all of that, then that is all there now. But guys, we'll see you. Oh, so, you um, hang on, the, stay there, the stay there. Everybody that's part of Ombi, I'm probably going to do a trip to the Maldives sometime soon. Yeah, um, so. keep, keep your eyes peeled. So if you're in the Insiders group, um, either today or tomorrow, Clay will put out a post. So Clay is doing a trip to the Maldives. It's in June or July of next year. Yeah. Um, but I'll we're just going to work out the, the post and, and how you book. So you won't book through Ombi, you're going to be booking through through a, a different um, surf charter, but it'll be a boat trip to the Maldives. It's going it's, to be epic. There's two back-to-back boat trips, but there's only eight slots in each yeah, one. Yeah, really. Um, so it's pretty exclusive. Yeah. But uh, I will release deets, 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 details of that very soon. Anyway, anyway. Have a good day or good night. Uh, uh, Corin, right. Corin finally made some noise. Corin, how are you doing? <laughs> I don't, it's, it's, it's not a beginner's, is it? No. It'll, it'll be intermediate because be in it's going to be in season yeah. as well, isn't it? Mm-hmm. So it'll be some decent. If we decent go to going um, Nicaragua, that would be more for beginners and lower intermediates. Yeah, but that hasn't been sorted out yet. But stay tuned. We will, we will keep you updated as soon as these things are sorted. Anyway, cheerio, guys. Have a great Have day. Have a great day. See ya.